Coming to you from Annapolis, Maryland, home of the U.S. Naval Academy, the sailing capital of the world, home of the world's largest crab feast, and four signers of the Declaration of Independence. This is the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, a daily roundup of local news that you can use, including local sports, local events, local opinion, and local weather from DMV Weather. Now here's your host, publisher of Eye on Annapolis, John Frenet. Good morning. It's Friday, August 31st, 2018. This is John Frenet, and this is your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. Late yesterday afternoon, the Capitol's Danielle Ohl reported that HACA has been denied the tax credits that they were planning to use to pay for the $25 million redevelopment of the Newtown 20 neighborhood. Newtown 20 is the authority's most distressed property, and just last week, city and HACA and state leaders toured the property where Speaker Bush said that he promised to try to secure funds for the project. Coming out of that meeting, residents were skeptical, and apparently now for good reason. Hacka's chief financial officer, Eileen Neely, said that she is optimistic that the news is not going to affect its timeline. They had already received a grant for demolition of the project so it can get started on schedule, and she said that the authority will look at alternate financing options as they go along. Now, I'm not in the business of building public housing, but it seems to me that before you start to demolish something and put people out of their homes, you probably need to know how to finish it. On Wednesday, the Anne Arundel County Police Department's Narcotics and Special Investigations Section raided a home on the 6400 block of Mount Vernon Lane in Glen Burnie for a drug case. 22-year-old Zachary Dylan Blake and 23-year-old Julian Anthony Joyner were both arrested and charged with possession with intent to distribute marijuana, possession of marijuana, possession of a firearm related to drug trafficking, using a firearm in the commission of a felony, and knowingly removing the manufacturer's identification number on the firearm. So what did the cops seize? Check this out. $20,000 in U.S. currency, 5,205.3 grams of marijuana. And for those that are metrically challenged like myself, that's 11.5 pounds. A 9 millimeter handgun loaded with the serial number removed. 245 THC oil canisters, which are e-cigarette refills. And they say that the approximate street value of those drugs is $104,106. Some good news for up in North County. Pasadena residents can breathe a sigh of relief. They were upset about the closure of the Magathy Health Center in Pasadena. Now, that location operated under a very favorable lease with the county of a dollar a year, and it was designed to provide services to women in the area without insurance. In June, the owner of the building was notified by the County Department of Health that they wouldn't be renewing the lease and the services could be handled by other nearby locations in Glen Burnie or down here in Annapolis, where the employees would ultimately be relocated. The patients using the clinic clinic were very upset and asked the county to keep the center open. County executive candidate Stuart Pittman agreed and he was to have a support rally to keep the center open scheduled for today. However, late yesterday afternoon, we learned that County Executive Steve Shue has put the brakes on that plan and told the health department to hold off. According to Owen McAvoy, Shue's spokesperson, he said, after the concerns of the community were raised, we felt it was an appropriate response. The move was not supposed to take place for a few months anyway. Better to step back and reevaluate. There is a strong community connection to the building and its history. And according to county officials, the clinic was not terribly busy. A typical week would realize less than six new enrollees. And with the advances in technology, the majority of those services could be obtained over the phone or online. Just across the border over in Prince George's County, a stand-up roller coaster is out at Six Flags America. And a new floorless roller coaster is in. The floorless roller coaster is called the Firebird, and according to Six Flags in a statement, floorless trains will give riders the sensation of being airborne as they soar along a half-mile track with nothing beneath their feet but the wind. In a statement from I on Annapolis, I said, oh hell no. Now the Firebird replaces Six Flags America's Apocalypse stand-up roller coaster, which closes for good on September 8th after six years. The new roller coaster starts with a Get this, nine-story drop and includes two inversions. It also has multiple high bank curves with high-speed carousel and corkscrew rolls and a figure-eight ending. And as I said in that prior statement, oh hell no. 
That is about it for the top news today. Please make sure you're checking out ionanapolis.net throughout the day because we do update it throughout the day. It is Friday. We do have our list of things to do. And as always, the last weekend of summer is a busy weekend. So you want to make sure you check that out. But before we get to that, we have George Young with your local DMV weather forecast. Save the date, September 29th and 30th, to see Richard Karn, yes, Al Borland, from the hit television show Home Improvement at the Annapolis Home X. I don't think so, Tim. No, it's true. Richard Karn will be at the Annapolis Home Expo, and while Richard will tell you about what not to do with the home improvement, there will be dozens and dozens of real home improvement contractors to tell you exactly what you should do. Bring in an antique for a free appraisal. Listen to the many workshops to help you make your home into the dream home you always wanted. Thinking about selling or buying? Northrop Realty and Craig Northrop will be on hand to offer tips for staging your home and how to negotiate the waters of one of the most important decisions you'll ever make. It all starts on September 29th at the Byzantium Center on Riva Road, Saturday from 10 to 6 and Sunday from noon to 5. Tickets are only $5 at the door, but get this, if you're named Al or anything close, or wear flannel, you're in for free. Remember the Annapolis Home Show, September 29th and 30th. This is Maryland. The weather can be nearly unpredictable. We've got George Young from DMV Weather in Annapolis to sort it all out. Hey everyone, this is George with DMV Weather, and this is your Eye on Annapolis forecast for Friday, August 31st. So here's the deal to close out August and take us through the long weekend as we celebrate Labor Day and get our act together at the end of yet another summer and beginning of yet another school year. Cloudy with occasional showers and storms expected for Annapolis and all of Anne Arundel County both today and tomorrow with temperatures in the 80 to 85 degree range, followed by more sunshine and warmer temps for Sunday and Monday with highs a bit warmer between 85 and 90, though the threat of PM thunderstorms lingers each day through Labor Day. And that's that. When Tuesday hits, it's back to work and back to school and back to more 80s and PM storms. But it's the end of the line for summer break 2018. So enjoy these last few days while we have them because it'll be rainy and 48 in mid-November or maybe, hopefully, snowy and 28 in early January before we know it. Okay, that's it for this week. Have a great holiday weekend out there wherever you go and whatever you do. And be sure to follow DMV Weather anywhere all the time at dmvweather.com or on social media via Twitter or Facebook or especially on our free app that you can download from the Apple App Store or Google Play Store on all of your devices by searching for DC MDVA Weather so you can always stay weather informed. But remember, whatever the weather outside, have fun and be safe. Suicide prevention starts with everyday heroes like you. Join us Saturday, September 22nd at the Navy Marine Corps Stadium in Annapolis as we walk to fight suicide. It's the 10th annual Annapolis Out of the Darkness Walk. Be a part of the movement turning hope into action. Funds raised will benefit the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Register today at AFSP.org slash Annapolis. Together, we can help stop suicide. Need to make plans for the weekend? We got you covered. Here are our top picks. Be sure to visit ionanapolis.net to sign up for the events newsletter with a listing of all the upcoming area events. Thank God it's Friday. It is Friday. It is the weekend. It is the end of summer. Well, the traditional end of summer. And like every other weekend in Annapolis, it is a busy one. But we're going to look a little bit outside of Annapolis to kick things off with the Appaloosa Festival. And this is going on. It starts tonight. It goes through Monday. It's down in Front Royal, Virginia. And this is a really cool, very chill festival. It's the Appaloosa Music Festival. And it will feature the rising stars of bluegrass, Americana, Celtic, and more. Headliners are going to include Mandolin Orange, Gaelic Storm, Scythian, Town Mountain, Six String Soldiers. There will be hammocks to lounge in. Star Hill and Bold Rock Cider are the craft beer sponsors. Rappahannock Cellars is the wine sponsor. Sponsor. Kids 12 and under are free with a paying adult. They've got a kid zone. Very chill music festival. Tickets are still available. You can go down for the weekend or you can just go down for a day. And you can find out more information at AppaloosaFestival.com. 
dot com. And that's Appaloosa like the horse. A P P A L O O S A. Working our way back home a little bit, the Bowie Bay Sox are wrapping up their 2018 season with a four-game home stand at Prince George's Stadium against the Altoona Curb, which are the AA affiliate of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Tonight and tomorrow's game will have fireworks, and on Sunday it is Fan Appreciation Day. The first 500 fans will receive a Bay Sox dual logo t-shirt. Kids will have a chance to run around the bases. You'll get a chance to meet the team. They'll be stationed up on the concourse, signing autographs, taking pictures. And that Sunday game is a one 135 game and finally on Monday the another 135 game where they will wrap up their not so successful 2018 season. And on Sunday at noon it's the first Sunday Arts Festival and they are going to mix it up a little bit this weekend with a Labor Day pop-up parade. Of course they're going to have about 150 different artisans along West Street and Calvert Street in downtown Annapolis. It is free. Come on down. Have a good time. The Labor Day Parade kicks off at 3 o'clock at the corner of West Street and Amos Garrett Boulevard. Heads down West Street toward the first Sunday Arts Festival and when it runs into it it takes a left onto Calvert Street and ends down at Northwest Street where they'll have several bands competing. Best spot to view the parade is probably along West Street. My vote is for the patio outside of Bar Oak. Sunday, we'll also see the burial of Senator John McCain at the Naval Academy. We do not have all of the details yet, but we do know that the motorcade that will bring McCain to the Academy will be going in through Gate 8, which is on 450. If I had to guess, I'm assuming that it comes off of Route 50, down Rao Boulevard, to a left on Taylor, to a right on 450, to a right into Gate 8. If you want to pay respects, I would probably suggest that in front of the District Courthouse on Rao Boulevard would be a good vantage point. Point, but there are no guarantees on that. The service for McCain will start at 2 p.m. at the Naval Academy Chapel. It is a closed service to both the public and press. After about an hour-long service, a horse-drawn caisson will take the senator to his final resting spot at the Naval Academy Cemetery overlooking the Severn River. Please be advised that there will be a flyover with the missing man formation that will accompany this burial. The missing man formation is when planes will come in formation and one representing a departed pilot will break away from the formation and fly off off and out of sight. Additionally, you may hear some gunshots. He will be given a 19-gun salute as he is laid to rest. As with most of the country, our thoughts, our prayers are with the McCain family during this difficult time. On Sunday night, the Annapolis Symphony Orchestra is having their annual Pops in the Park. It's an evening of music from film, and this is at Quiet Waters Park. It is free. You can get into the park for free. You can see the concert for free. And it's a partnership between the Annapolis Symphony Orchestra and the Anne Arundel County Department of Recreation and Parks. It gets underway at 5.30. You can bring a picnic, but bring a blanket, some lawn chairs. Dogs are welcome. And enjoy a fun evening out with family and friends. This year's program is filled with the many festive and well-loved pieces from films like Titanic, Chicago, Superman. As for Monday, it is Labor Day, so just chill out, relax, enjoy the day off. We're going to do that. We will not be here on Labor Day. But until then, be safe. If you're out partying, please do it responsibly. And we will see you on Tuesday. Thanks for listening to the Ion Annapolis Daily News Brief. If you like what you heard, make sure to tell your friends and colleagues about it. And also tell them about our website, ionanapolis.net, where you can find much more. Be sure to check out our other weekly podcast, The Maryland Crabs. This podcast comes to you every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.